bring it back. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. So today we have not got some modded content, we're back with uh, some of the proper content, some core game content from the new Jeep DLC. So I have been to the auction and I have purchased myself uh, sort of an old military Willys Jeep. Um, I've got the bodywork sorted out and I've got all the suspension components stripped off but none of it rebuilt and put back on. So I've also taken the engine out, with the DLC has also introduced new engines into the game. So I've got this engine out here, so we've got to strip and rebuild this, get this back into the engine, sort out the suspension, and then we can give it a bit of a trip, bit of a trip around the track. So first things first, let's get the engine sorted. So we've got to get it stripped down. So this is a new entry engine that they've introduced into the game. Um, which is nice, it's all painted sort of in the military green it's even got Jeep stamped on the on the head plate there which is nice to see some new engines rather than just sort of reusing of the old ones all the time so let's get this thing dismantled um, it's a little bit, it's an it's a inline 4 engine so it shouldn't be too complicated, shouldn't be too hard to disassemble um, but we shall see, see how we get on so take the uh, pumps off so we've got all the auxiliary equipment, all the auxiliary belts on the outside. Water pump pulley and water pump. Take that off. And the alternator. Obviously, as I'm sure most of you know, so the old Wheels Jeep is quite an old uh, old vehicle. It's like the old Second World War, um, you know, sort of equivalent of the Cuba wagon sort of thing. Uh, sort of... Um, Designed to sort of be a four-wheel drive, off-road, sort of highly rugged, highly reliable uh, sort of vehicle, all-terrain vehicle for the use by the military. And uh, by all accounts, it's very successful. Um, people still use them today. I think they were largely used by farmers and stuff after the war. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty great success, I believe. So, hopefully, when we've got our engine rebuilt and our suspension put on, ours shall be as reliable and successful. So we'll distribute, uh, dismantle the distributor, ignition coil, then uh, so it's carburetor fed rather than um, injections, that's the word, it's not got fuel injectors because obviously it's such an old vehicle, sort of 40s, um, you know this is sort of earlier technology. So we'll take the manifold off, there we go, do that like that. Uh, there's a fuel pump down, oh, there's a little small, there's also a fuel pump in the tanks, there's like an auxiliary fuel pump there as well. They seem to have gone to a little bit more detail on some of these engines, like we've got uh, engine mounts here, or engine arms, which is nice, nice to see that sort of the, the, the uh, quality of the work being produced by the developers is increasing all the time. And with the introduction of all the, uh, so this is Jeep DLC, so it's not just the Willys Jeep, they've also got some of the more modern Jeeps. And so this has introduced sort of a series of new engines into the game, which is good because they're engines that can then be taken advantage of um, for modded content. So it's going to sort of open a more vari a variety of uh, things to be used, which is always good to see. So let's dismantle, take off the oil pan off the bottom, and then we'll take all the rod caps off the four pistons and get these out. We'll take off each rod cap. like so and then, then I should be able to pull out each piston which I am it's strange that uh, the camshaft is in the bottom there I'm not quite sure how how that works it must be controlling the valve timings just from from the wrong way out wrong way around compared to a conventional engine so uh, then we've got the crankshaft so we'll take off the uh, bearing caps Retaining the crankshaft, which should then allow me to take this out and we'll take the clutch off the end. So, we've got them off, so let's get the clutch under the flywheel. So, we've got the release bearing, pressure plate. Pretty hard to see anything on this because the engine stands in the way. Take the flywheel off and then the crankshaft should come out, which it does, and then the engine block should just assemble like so. So, we've got the engine completely. To take them back down to nothing. So we're going to get over to the repair bench and get this thing put back up. As much as 
possible. Invariably, some things will break, so we're going to have to pay a few visits to the shop, I'm afraid, I'm sure. Um, we always normally seem to. Hopefully, I have preemptively got most of the suspension components sort of sorted, so most of that should should be able to rebuild without too much problem. So, let's have a look. Rebuild. Get the block in place first. Oh, that looks nice and clean. Um, we're upside down, so we'll get the crankshaft in. Get that retained. And get the pistons in first. Then we can put the, uh, the oil sump back on and turn the engine back round. So that's the crankshaft in. Uh, the pistons don't normally repair. No, so we need to buy ourselves. If it will let me click off the engine block. Let's go to the shop and buy ourselves four pistons. And piston rings, obviously. Four of them. And four of them. So let's get these dropped into place. Piston and ring. Piston and ring. And two more. And then we can retain these pistons then with the rod caps so that then they're properly connected to the crankshaft. Get them bolted in. Like so. Then we can drop the camshaft in uh, next to it. Get that bolted in. Uh, well, that doesn't need bolting in. Get that in. And then we can stick the sump back on the bottom of the engine. Now I want to stick the camshaft in, like this so. And then I should be able to stick the oil pan back on the bottom. Excellent. So let's pop out of this and let's turn this engine back around. Go back into build mode. Um, so let's deal with the timing gear. Uh, so we need a new cam gear. Um, I think it was that one, he says, hopefully. Yes, it was. Get that bolted into place. Water pump got repaired, so we can get that bolted in. Um, I'm going to need to do a timing chain, though, almost certainly. Yes, I will. Timing chain. Um, I believe it was that one. Also, while I'm here, I should get some idle rollers. Because you normally always need a couple of these, and they are dirt cheap, so I normally stock up on a few. Uh, save me have to keep visiting the shop and buying them. So let's drop the timing chain on, and then we can put the cover on it, bolt that in place, and then we should be able to put on some of the auxiliary equipment. So you need a V8 crankshaft pulley and a water pump pulley. So, crankshaft pulley, water pump pulley, there we go, like so. Um, I'll also need to buy some serpentine belts, some of the auxiliary belts, but I haven't yet got them. So that pulley on, put the crankshaft pulley on, bolt that in, um, and then we've got the two arms, arm A and arm B. So these are like the uh, you know, the engine mounts, basically. So we'll get them, and then we should be able to mount these back on. And then this should allow me to mount um, things like the water pump, the uh, the alternator, that sort of thing. So that's then power steering. I'm surprised it has a power steering pump for a 1940s vehicle. Uh, put the alternator back on, like that. And all this should be able to connect it. So serpentine belt A. Things like um, <coughs> serpentine belts just never get never get repaired. Uh, so you do always have to buy new ones. It's just remembering to buy new ones is the problem. Um, belt B. Um, and it could also be one of them possibly as well. Let's see how that gets us on. Um, always hard to remember which one you're supposed to have. Drop that in. And excellent. There we go. So we've got the oh. And the radiator fan has repaired. Get that bolted into place. There we go. So we've got all the timing and auxiliary part of the engine now built up. So we should drop the engine head back on and get that bolted into place with its absolute million bolts. There we go. Drop them in. Um, we also need to get some new spark plugs. We'll also need a new oil filter and a new air filter. 
So, spark plugs. There we go, we want to get four of them since it's a four cylinder engine. Um, oil filter, one of them. Um, air filter, I think it's probably one of them. We have an air filter base as well. Um, and probably one of them, just in case they haven't repaired in the sort of uh, on the repair bench. So uh, we've got the oil filter base, which is sort of an integral component. Get the new oil filter dropped in, and oh, we need an oil filter cover. Uh, one of them. So get that bolted uh, new cover bolted back on. Starting to make the engine look quite nice and new now. The ignition coil go on, air filter base, N brand new air filter, and then there should be the cap on it as well. Yeah, retains it. We've got our four new spark plugs to drop in, which we should do like that. Uh, and we need to rebuild the distributor, so we're going to probably need all of those bits. Um, so we've got an ignition wires, we'll have some of them. Ignition distributor. Um, distributor cap. And we'll have a rotary arm as well. We may even need some of the clips, but hopefully for now we won't. So let's get this put in. The rotor in. And then the cap, put it back on. So it should have two little tiny little clips also need to be put on. It's one of the more silly bits of the uh, the game, the way they put these clips in. But they are repairable in the thing. So drop those clips on. Um, right. So we'll pop back around the other side. So we've got other things. Fuel pump. A little auxiliary fuel pump to keep the engine well supplied. And we've got the manifold. Ah, the manifold didn't repair. So let's pop to the shop and get a manifold. Source manifold, and now we can get this dropped back into the engine. Oh, that did repair, so we can get that dropped in without too much trouble, like so. And the carburetor repaired as well. Air filter cover there, though, did not repair. So air filter. Um, ah, it's one of them. Oops. So get this put on. And I also need to buy a fuel filter because I just forgot. And all the clutch assembly. So, let's get a fuel filter. And I want a flywheel. It's very expensive. And one of each of these. So, let's get this put on, and then the engine is pretty much rebuilt. Got the fuel filter dropped in, the clutch plate, the pressure plate, right, they're all dropped back in, and I'm pretty sure that's everything on this engine now rebuilt. So we'll take this engine off the off the frame. So take engines off there. Then we can go open the hood, and using the engine crane, we can install this engine back in, like so. So we've now got a brand new engine in our Jeep, which is excellent, just what we wanted. So um, let's just sort out the rest of the engine components. So we've got things like a brake servo, should have a new one of them, new radiator, and a new battery, so we can get it started. Um, still got to put things like the rest of the bits on all the axis all underneath. So let's close that and crank this Jeep back up on the car ramp. So we've got all the suspension side of things to do. And see, it's hopefully a bit of a more accurately modelled suspension compared to uh, some of the modded, modded vehicles. Um, not something I know a great deal about how they actually work, but obviously they're all leaf springs all around. It's quite an old design. So we'll drop the new bushings in. On these leaf springs. 
get the bulk of the suspension built back up. I should have most of the parts pre, uh, pre-ordered so we shouldn't have to spend too long in the shops. Although you never quite know with me. Uh, front drive shaft, obviously it's four wheel drive. And we've got the uh, bits for the drum and we've got the drum housing on top. Like so. Got the tie rod. Put that in there. And the front shock. Like so. We just need the plates and the uh, YouTube bolts to hold the leaf spring in place, one on each side. The knuckle ring on the back of back of the uh, steering housing on the four wheel drive drive shaft. Okay, so that's that side done. So let's pop over to the other side. So again, we'll put the knuckle on, tie rod. leaf spring and the bolts to retain the leaf spring like so on both sides and then get the front shock as well adopted on this side and build up the brake drum again They're pretty simple cars in, uh, in terms of the construction not a lot to them but I think that's kind of what made them so successful get that dropped in. Uh, don't want to forget the little rubber bushings in each side of the leaf spring. Easy to do. They are pretty essential. Well otherwise the car just won't be able to be driven. If you forget to put them in. Right, so then we can drop the gearbox back on the underside of the engine. I will have to remember to load this down at the end uh, to put the starter motor in because it won't let me currently has to be done from the engine bay. Then we've got the transfer case which provides, uh, which takes it and provides drive to the rear wheels as well which makes the car four-wheel drive. There's the front drive shaft to the front transfer, uh, to the front differential. Uh, we've got the exhaust running through the middle. I think if I drop this rear differential in we should now have the drive shaft to the transfer case which we do. So let's get that bolted in. like that. Okay, now just got to quickly build up the rear part of the car. Real hub. Solid rear drive axle again, as I say, four wheel drive. Get that bolted in. Just in case of the brake shoes and the drum. And that's the rear of the car. Pretty much built back up bar the leaf spring. Get the plates bolted in. And the new bolts on each side. Oops, missing a rubber bushing there, don't want to forget that. And obviously the shock absorber. Uh, there we go, I knew I'd forget something. It was inevitable. So I got forgot the fuel tank. And I've got a few put mile on there, just in case. Uh, where am I? I'm lost. Oops, no, I want to get to part mount. Drop the fuel tank and the new fuel pump back in. So it's got to do the same on this side. Drop the leaf spring in. Drop the rear shock absorber. Uh, got the hub to build up the um, the drum brakes again. Drive shaft in. Brick shoes. And then the uh, drum on the outside. Again, just a couple of rubber bushings to stick in. The retaining plate for the leaf spring, like so. And then there should just be one more little rubber bushing there, look, hiding at the back. So, um, in terms of suspension setup, that should be the bulk of it. Uh, it's pretty well modelled as it is now. I like the fact we've got the transfer case in the middle, uh, power going to both sides of the car, trim brakes all around, leaf springs all around. We're on an Austrian number plate. Okay, different. Um, so let's get the wheels on. Get the four wheels back on. 
We'll quickly pop to the paint shop just to see if there are any cool liveries available for the car. I don't think there's going to be. Um, and I quite like it in this sort of uh, military sort of olive green sort of colour. I think it kind of suits it quite well. So I'll be inclined to keep that. Just got to remember I've got to, still got to stick the starter motor on and I've got to stick some oil into the engine. Okay, so let's lower this thing back down. Open up the bonnet, pop round and get the starter motor put back on. Which mm, mm, ah, that side. Got that in, that should be pretty much everything there. Then you've just gotta find where's the oil there it is. Oil fill plug. There we go. Some high quality oil, some premium motor oil. Plug that in. Excellent. Close that and then let's move this car to the paint shop. Let's have a look what we've got available. Oh, we have got quite a few. We've got like modern military colours. Oh, I like the old uh, sort of desert sun colour. That's like the classic, classic military style jeep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Okay, now let's give this thing a quick move it to the front of the garage, and then we'll quickly whip it out and have a quick go on the test track. I don't think it's going to handle particularly well. Um, <laughs> An old 1940s Jeep, but it's better than nothing, so let's take it to the racetrack. Well, it's let me do it, so I've clearly not forgotten any of the bushings, which is what I normally do. Um, while waiting for that to load, hopefully you've sort of been enjoying, enjoying the channel so far. Things seem to be going quite well. We're up to sort of 43 subscribers, I think, as of this video, which I'm very pleased with. If you're enjoying these videos, really appreciate it if you can subscribe. really helps the channel out. But, without further ado, let's give this thing... Oh, wow. It's a little bit soft. Oh, it's very soft. <laughs> Not the easiest thing to drive on a keyboard. Um, it's faster than I thought it was going to be. Whee! Oh, wow. That's, um... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not entirely sure it would handle quite that badly. But this isn't a, uh, a driving simulation game. It's certainly got a, uh, a bit of an overly soft suspension, I think. I think that may be, may be a little bit of a glitch there with quite how much it sort of oscillates in heavy turning. I don't think it's quite supposed to do that. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's certainly been a bit of a fun one to make, a little bit different from our normal, our normal uh, videos. I think it's quite a cool little Jeep we've got. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks guys. I shall see you on the next one.